What are the most influential speedrunners of all time? If you've been in the scene for a while, there's a few names that might come to mind. Most notably Andrew G, ZFG, Matt Turk, Darbian, and countless others. But what if I told you there's a speedrunner who completely changed how a game was played, and unknowingly influenced a new generation of players? This is Dupree in 2015. It's the only footage which shows his face in a 3 hour recording of his first ever solo COD Zombies world record, round 1245 on World at War Nocturne and Toten, achieving it when he was only 18 in February of 2015. Despite accomplishing the world record, this 3 hour recording contains some of the most important information in COD Zombies history, a game which barely came across as a speedrun became one of the most impressive speedruns ever. So why did it take nearly six and a half years until Zombies became a speedrun? How did Dupree come up with this information? And what caused this information to go unnoticed years after his world record? On November 10th, 2012, Dupree would create his first Twitch account to watch speedrunners such as Sliglemic, Worcester, and Trihex after watching them from Awesome Games Done Quick. These three speedrunners had a massive impact on many viewers, especially Dupree, who was only 15 at the time. This was significant because COD Zombies wasn't speedrunned, partly due to World at War, which was the first edition of Zombies released four years prior. Essentially, the skill level of Zombies was low compared to games such as Super Mario 64, which had been speedrunned for years. However, it was mostly because zombie players did not know about speedrunning or did not recognize zombies as a speedrun besides Dupree. Despite this, it would take until fall of 2014 when Dupree decided to play Nocturne Tone. While insignificant at the time, Dupree's decision to play Noct would quite literally change the map and the game forever. How so? Well, unlike most zombie players, Dupree used a timer, which was very rare back then. Furthermore, he did this on World at War, which never crossed the mind of players to speedrun it. In fact, World at War never hit a reset. For a brief definition, a reset means the game resets you back to round 1 after a certain amount of time played. As an example, Varukt, which is also a World at War map, has a reset of about 80 hours. So this means a player has to play 80 hours in game until they reset back to round one. Thankfully, you can pause the game. Despite this, hitting a reset on the map was extremely impressive. Moreover, Black Ops 1, which was released two years after World at War, had a significantly higher skill level than World at War. Surprisingly, it was still uncommon to see someone reset on any map, and this is why it was revolutionary for Dupree to use a timer and to attempt to hit the reset on Nocturne and Tone. Although, this would be overshadowed by his first and most iconic strategy, the Dupree Hoard Up. This strategy is self-explanatory. It abuses zombie movement and tracking, allowing a player to get a horde of zombies. However, what makes this strategy different is Dupree only used on insta-kill rounds, it would only hoard 12 of the 24 zombies that spawn on each round. If you don't know what insta-kill rounds are, that's fine because I'll explain them shortly. But first, you need to learn what power-ups are. On World at War Nocturne and Toten, there are 4 power-ups, a max ammo, double points, nuke, and the insta-kill. The max ammo refills all ammo in the two weapons you can carry, a double points, well, doubles your points, a nuke kills the entire horde of zombies which spawn on each round, and an insta-kill allows a player to kill a zombie in one bullet with any weapon. Obviously, the nuke and the insta-kill are the best power-ups out of the four. Because of this, Dupree would wait until insta-kill rounds to do his iconic horde up. Essentially, insta-kill rounds occur on round 163 and after because the zombie's health reaches a 32-bit limit on this round. Although, the game cannot go higher than this number. So, to get around this, it forces the zombie's health back to round 1, allowing a player to kill them almost instantly. 
So, why do drops matter so much if every round was an insta-kill round? Well, there's a catch. While round 163 is an insta-kill round, round 164 will not be, although 165 will be, and so on. Because of this, a player is forced to use a flamethrower on non-insta-kill rounds. This becomes problematic as it takes on average 1 minute and 40 seconds to kill the entire horde of zombies so you can get to the next round. This is why the nuke and insta-kill power-ups are extremely helpful, as it allows a player to finish a non-insta-kill round faster, to be exact, 30 seconds on average. By doing this, Dupree made the game more optimized and much safer. At least that's what he thought. You see, while the Horde Up made Noct faster, it never truly optimized the map, because Dupree was playing the first room strategy. In short, a player opens both couches on the map and trains in the first room near the help door. At the time, this was the only high round strategy for the map. Surprisingly, it was relatively easy, however it had some drawbacks. Because the strategy was easy, it meant it was slow and would occasionally get really inconsistent. The way the strategy would get inconsistent is because of the zombies pathing. All zombies have a designated window to go to. However, sometimes the game's code doesn't always work properly, which causes them to go to an entirely different window instead causing the player to get confused as to why the zombie is coming through a window so late. As an example, here's how a normal horde up can turn near deadly in a matter of seconds. Oh no, Megusta. Jesus, man. How did that guy get to that window so late? I've never seen that before. Keep in mind, all it takes is just two hits and your game ends on Noct. Due to this, Dupree decided he needed to find a new strategy that was faster and more consistent. In mid-2015, Dupree would test his new strategy called Noct One Door. Essentially, all a player had to do was open up the help door and train in the mystery box room although it's easier said than done. The mystery box room was very cramped, proving a big problem for Dupree as he needed to find a consistent horde up so he would not get trapped in the corner of zombies. Well, it would take many years until he found the proper horde up. While this sounds like a pain for Dupree, it was actually a blessing in disguise. You see, when Dupree was trying to find out a consistent horde up, it also gave him time to figure out faster ways to play Noct. One of the ways was keeping the Thompson until round 30 and keeping the ray gun up till round 60. The reason for this is because the Thompson has a further range compared to the flamethrower, saving up to 2 to 3 minutes by round 30, and keeping the ray gun up to round 60 can save roughly 30 minutes. This was revolutionary as Dupree went from a 1 hour round 50 time in his round 1240 game to a 48 minute and 47 second round 50 a year and a half later. Lastly, it was around this time Dupree was getting better at finding a consistent ward up. First, he would start lighting the zombies on fire in the wall window so he could get some more damage in to play faster. Then, he would go to the Thompson window to get more damage and give himself some time before the zombies coming out of the Thompson window cut him off during the horde up. Next, he would run towards the mystery box so any zombies coming from the first room do not cut him off from the door. However, doing this meant Dupree had to stun the zombies with the flamethrower since a few zombies were still coming out of the Thompson window. So, by stunning the zombies, it gave him enough room to walk past and avoid getting stuck on any zombies coming from the window. Finally, after running past the zombies from the Thompson window, he would run past the window on the opposite side of the wall window to avoid any late spawners. And this is where the horde up ends. Unsurprisingly, this horde up was very difficult to master. Matter of fact, Dupree's highest round running knocked one door from 2016 till 2019 was round 436, almost three times lower than his 1245 game. 
although that would slowly change starting in 2019. Starting around July of 2019, Dupree found out if you disconnect your Xbox 360 from the internet and made a non-Xbox Live account, you could play the first fully released version of World at War. This was when Zombies first came out and you had to unlock it by beating the campaign. So why did Dupree decide to play 1.0? Basically, the ray gun and the flamethrower dealt more damage and gave you more points per kill. 100 points instead of 50 points in the later patches. Obviously, this was really helpful as Dupree could play faster thanks to the extra damage from the weapons, as well as playing safer since he was killing the zombies much faster than before. Within just a month, Dupree would reach around 1558 playing pre-patch Nocturne Tone. While easier, this game took 22 hours until he game overed, proving he could beat his round 1245 game with the normal patch. And he did. In March 2020, Dupree would beat his personal best by achieving round 1284. Despite beating his previous personal best by 39 rounds, Dupree finally proved it was possible to get the world record running the knocked one door strategy. Because of this, many players saw potential in his strategy. However, it would take half a year before anyone got close to beating the record. It wasn't until August of 2020, a new world record of around 2,511 was achieved running Knocked One Door. And it wasn't Dupree who got it. It was a player named Chief Legit. To understand why this record was so significant, we need to look at how much time it took Chief to get this record. If we compare the first room strategy, it takes a player on average 6 to 8 months of restarts to get the record. Instead, Chief ran one door. The total time to be the current world record, which is around 2019, only took him one month. Yes, you heard that right, only one month to break the world record. That is insane considering Dupree was able to create a more consistent, and faster strategy than the first room strat. Furthermore, this wasn't the only innovation Dupree made a World at War. In early 2016, an improved version of the iconic Varuk double tap electric trap strategy was found. Originally, players opened up a majority of the map because they thought it was safer. Well, it wasn't. The reason why it was not safer is because the zombies spawned around the entire map on Varuk. Essentially, opening up the entire map made it less safe. So, in 2016, a high rounder named Jim4495 did some testing and found out if you spawn on the jug side of Verruckt and only open up the power, you can limit the amount of windows the zombies can spawn out of, making the strategy safer and faster. And this was regarded as a well-known fact for 6 years that Jim was a person who improvised the double tap electric trap strategy until they were wrong. It was Dupree who found it. Hell, this barely scratches the surface of the impact Dupree has had on World at War. In 2016, he would run the Thompson Room strategy on Duris up to round 50, which was thought to be impossible. Why you ask? Well, Duris had a wonder weapon called the Wunderwaff, an infinite damaging wonder weapon that can kill up to 10 zombies with one bullet. Although, there is one drawback. If you electrocuted yourself with the Wunderwaff, you cannot regenerate your health back. This is why it is considered impossible to run the Thompson Room strategy since it was extremely easy to waff yourself. Despite this, Dupree would achieve around 50 time of 1 hour, 16 minutes, and 29 seconds, a record which stood for 2.5 years. This is why Dupree is considered a legend in the World at War community. 
Not only did he create strategies and improve on them, he also transformed an entire game into a speedrun. Forever Going Down is one of the greatest World at War players and one of the most innovative and influential people in Zombies history.